Hi everyone and welcome to Matt's Chats and today we have Rebecca with us uh, and we're talking about being at risk. Um, Rebecca, I know Rebecca fairly well uh, from a European camp and we were just checking the year, it was, it was actually 2016, you were right Rebecca, so uh, yeah, we're from Eurocamp. Um, so uh, we spent, we already know Rebecca fairly well from that. Um, but for everybody else who doesn't know Rebecca, would you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, so hello, my name's Rebecca. I am 23 and I'm a qualified teacher. And uh, I'm at risk from Huntington's. Um, my dad had Huntington's and sadly passed away in 2019. Um, so yeah, I'm at risk, I haven't been tested. So being at risk is a very interesting topic, I think, you know. Um, you know, I've been at risk for a long time when I got tested when I was, I mean, I, I knew I was at risk for a long time uh, when I was growing up and got tested when I was 19. Um, so I, I haven't had that at risk over me since then, but I've obviously, I've tested positive. So I've got that hanging over me now. Um, but it's very an interesting situation being at risk because um, everything can kind of, you don't really know you're kind of very stuck in you don't really know which way could go up and where life could go for you um and I, i'm just wondering kind of like when did you first know you were at risk um so i found out that my dad was ill when i was about 12 mm -hmm. um and from what i remember i don't think we were really told the ins and outs of it just because of how old we were but then I remember being in school and because Huntington's is like in the GCC biology course or was at the time anyway. Um, I feel like I got pulled out of a lesson to meet one of the science teachers who kind of went through the fact that we'd be learning about it. So I think from around that age, like 14, 15, when we were learning about it at the same time in school, that's when I kind of developed more of an understanding of being at risk. And when you kind of first realized that you were at risk and first kind of it might not have been when you were 12 or 13 or whatever it might have been a bit later when you first realized that oh actually i have a 50 percent risk and kind of when that first dawned on you that this is how you do how things were did you have a reaction how did you feel about that um i feel like i didn't quite understand it at first it's only as it's kind of got on that i've reacted to it more I think at first it's kind of like oh right okay um this is something I'm gonna have to deal with or um live with um I think at first I think oh I'll get tested when I'm old enough but then as I've got older that's changed as well so I think reactions wise it's just I think it's one of them where it's like so many different reactions and it happens at different times and yeah yeah <laughs> No, it just makes sense. Absolutely. Um, I think I probably felt the same way at first. It was like, you know, it's kind of difficult to comprehend, especially if you're finding out when you're young. Uh, you know, that also goes against you in terms of kind of like just comprehending what the information is. And then, you know, you've got it in your head, but you don't really, really truly understand it and, and the significance that it could have on your life. Of course, I think that's quite, quite common. Um, yeah. Um, so when you were kind of like, let's say when you were at camp, you were 18 and stuff like this, you and you were going to university and stuff, were your feelings changing or you said that you also, you thought you'd get tested when you were like 18, 19 or something like that. So, but you haven't obviously. So what's, what kind of changes have you had over time? Um, I think more the realization of how much of an impact it could have knowing as well um so i've got three younger brothers so there's i know there's all that stuff about um like guilt if you test negative um so i think that's a massive thing that i worry about if i was to be negative and then still worrying about my brothers whether they were going to be positive or not um yeah. and then the whole idea of testing positive as well i think that was something that scared me quite a bit especially in, with the career at the time, like the career I was wanting to go into, I was worried that, well, if I test positive, will that Im impact on me qualifying or being able to do what I want kind of thing. Older, I've worried about it more as well. I don't know if it's because I know like the 
typical age of when symptoms can start to show that as I've got older to that well close to that age I'm a bit more like all right um I don't want to know because then at least I can enjoy my time up to it but then I want to know so that I can plan um yeah it's I think as a yeah as it's gone it's got more daunting but then I've put it off a bit more as well I think Mm. and you said in your in your notes that you you did see a genetic cancer at one point um and how did that go for you then um it was quite interesting really so I think that was during my second year of university when I just started Mm. and I think at that time I'd convinced myself that I wanted to know um and I feel like I had conversation with friends as well um about it so I went to the meeting um and kind of spoke about Huntington's with the counsellor and I looked at um I found like a family map of who had it in my family kind of thing um and then like we talked about the process a bit more um and I think after that I was a bit like no I don't want to like carry on I think the counsellor was also um like it's quite supportive of that so she sent me more information um just about the whole process um yeah. but yeah I think going into it I was a bit like this is yeah I don't feel comfortable really knowing just yet <laughs> and it, so you went into that kind of meeting did you go into that meeting thinking that you wanted to get tested or were you just kind of going in wanting information um I think I was going in wanting to get tested but I don't think I quite understood why I was going in or um just how much would come from being tested and mm. um, yeah I think it was I think just like what I'd like conversations I had with people and I think I kind of convinced myself that's what I wanted whereas really it wasn't yeah it wasn't right at the time. <laughs> and you felt after that first appointment you felt that this actually is not the right time? Yeah yeah I think um I think as something the counsellor said as well was because I was in the middle of uni um it was one of them where if I found out during university like it could impact on like being there and didn't really want that um impact to happen kind of thing Mm. so yes I mean uh, there's so much to think about isn't there um yeah about you know in terms of especially when you're just a young person as well it's like you know there's always something that you're doing and and, you know (laughs) always the next thing that you're getting on to so yeah it's difficult to find the time to fit in you know to kind of think about okay yeah this is the time for for it or not you know yeah. um but I always think I mean my always my advice for you people is always just just be 100% sure you know just be sure about what you want because if you're not sure that you want to get tested then don't do it you know yeah. um but just if you're always if you stay 100% sure throughout the process, then you're probably in the right place and it's the right time for you to, to know. Um, but yeah, it's such a difficult thing to handle mentally. Um, yeah, it, it, you've just got to be ready for it, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, so you mentioned three younger brothers. Um, so do you, do you talk... Uh, as a family about being at risk about testing um all things like this or not um not particularly we talk about Huntington's kind of more generally um, I feel like we talk about my dad um I feel that's how we talk about Huntington's um but we've not really spoken about being at risk I feel like me and my brothers have had very co- conversations like briefly before um like a few years ago but it's not something that we massively talk about Mm. um yeah (laughs) but it's but it's certainly something that's on your mind when you're thinking about you know being at risk and and getting tested yeah definitely I think think it'd be quite nice to have that conversation with them um especially now that we're all a bit older as well I think when we were younger and having these kind of the, the conversations um I can't quite remember them but I feel like what was said then probably would change mm. now yeah yeah uh, I, I think I, I don't have any siblings at all so I, I'm, I'm just speaking from 
a place of stupidity here, but um, it's it's really just that you know talking about your own risk, talking about whether you want to get tested or not, is a whole different kind of level of conversation versus just talking about hunting chunks in general. You know what I mean? Like it's a it's kind of a much more personal conversation, um, which is still I think very beneficial to do. Um, you know, if you've got siblings, I think it is it is beneficial to know like where you stand with each other and just kind of, you know, so that you can kind of support each other if you are going through these things as well. And hopefully you're all in a place where if somebody does get tested, somebody tests positive or negative, whatever, um, that you are kind of understanding and supportive of everyone's situation there, you know. Um, but yeah, siblings, is it makes it a lot more challenging to kind of think about whether you want to get tested or not I think definitely I think I don't know I feel like being the eldest I feel a bit more like protective as well mm -hmm. so I know that if say I wasn't wasn't to get tested but one of my brothers were I feel like quite worried for them as well like you know in the run-up to knowing what the result is and obviously after mm -hmm. the result as well either way I'd be quite worried for them so yeah and I guess there's also a feeling of like I mean, emotionally um that's what I, I think that's what makes it more challenging is you just have to kind of you also have to bear in mind the emotions of other people um whereas when I was getting tested I didn't have to do that so much you know uh you know at least not for any siblings uh yeah, yeah. um so you also mentioned uh that you were in a relationship now um for a couple of years so congratulations <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, so obviously that's also difficult to talk about being at risk and getting tested and things like this um, and developing an understanding of Huntington's disease um, for them. Uh, I just, you know, how has that gone for you? Um, it's been all right, actually. Um, I think, so my boyfriend's quite supportive and um, I think when I first told him, he kind of like looked into it a bit more to like kind of, find out more um I think the conversations about being at risk are a little bit harder um mm. purely because I feel like he's quite an optimistic person um so I don't know if sometimes there's like that oh like it'll be fine whatever happens it'll be fine whereas for me seeing especially I think growing up in like the household as well I'm a bit more like yeah but what if this or what if that yeah. um but it's quite nice that if I can speak about it which I really like being able to like I can Say, say something whenever um and like we can have that conversation about it which is really helpful um but yeah I think sometimes I'm a bit more like pessimistic <laughs> about it all um yeah <laughs> I don't know yeah I don't know if that's just um how it is for people because you know I've had I've had that too where uh, you know uh partners are like yeah it's just gonna be don't worry about it it's gonna be okay kind of thing and it's mm. it's um but obviously for, for you and I who've kind of been through that and know the kind of like how significant that risk is and how significant testing is, um, it, you know, you, you just wonder if they're, they're kind of understanding as much as, as you would, but at the same time, they're not going to understand as much as you will, are they? And nobody ever will because they just can't do that. But um, and it's the same for you no. Know, if he's got something in his family that you just probably won't understand it the way that he will. So yeah. it is what it is. You just have to kind of, if as long as you've got somebody who's there and supportive and and, and kind of tries their best to understand and accept, I think that's it's all you could really hope for, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. I feel like it's um, the same with my friends as well. My friends are really supportive, um, but I do sometimes think when topics about like being at risk or testing come up it is a bit more we don't quite understand um so it is a little like a little bit harder to have those kind of conversations yeah. um but yeah they are like, they are very supportive and um, very grateful for that so in terms of your uh relationship like uh like where you're looking long term what are you thinking about being at risk and about uh do you think there will be a time where you'll get tested or are you still not really sure what's going to happen? I'm not too entirely sure. I do think, obviously, like planning for the future, it would be quite nice to have a family. But then I know 
being in this situation myself that like, it would be quite tough to put someone else in that situation I think I don't think I've worded that right either <laughs> um yeah, makes sense but, um so yeah so when it comes to things like that I do think oh well I could get tested but then I know there's also like alternatives such as like IVF and the um I can't think what it's called now the one where they check the embryo and all that. yeah um so I feel like having that kind of side of things is helpful as well to have like the, those options if that kind of situation was to arise it was very nice to see you again I really appreciate that you wanted to do this for us too